Logan's barely a person. Old Yoshida has the awesomest Ben I've ever seen. Despite leaving the film over two years ago, Darren Aronofsky still has a bit of his... some influences on the film. Viper feels really, really, really out of place, especially since all the other villains of the movie feel like they're one water crisis away from being the bad guys in Chinatown. The hard-to-spot references to the original X-Men movies are the best. We get our own Japanese Hawkeye! Hugh Jackman still does a great job with Wolverine. Nice to see Jean Grey again, but I kind of expected a mention of Cyclops, who is not only someone part of that love triangle, but also kind of died by her hand. Silver Samurai had a cool design, but then the finale had to go and make it like a real steel, Transformers, Iron Man type thing, and it, it just fell out of place. Bullet trains are the perfect place to hold action sequence. Did they ever say how Viper actually poisoned Logan? I know in the dream sequence they showed her putting, like, her tongue or something down his throat, but... I thought those were just dreams, like premonitions. The NBA rating system is pretty much pointless at this point. The Wolverine, which is rated PG-13, depicts a man cutting open his own chest and digging around in his heart for a little robot. On the other hand, The Untouchables, this beautiful foreign movie, is rated R for brief language. The system is broken. Five things I learned include the five times a character betrays another character. Did Stanley and Fox have a falling out? Because he's not in this movie either. It takes like 20 arrows for Wolverine to finally be defeated. James Mangold can somewhat make up for the horrific night and day. Somewhat. Logan knows a lot about arrows, especially ones that are poisonous. I'm kind of surprised no one's pointed out that the Wolverine and Iron Man 3 are almost the exact same narrative. The film starts out with the main superhero being a bit of a recluse, scarred from previous events that he's had to do. Then he's brought out of retirement by an old... Then he's brought out of retirement by a massive attack. Then he's got to go around out in a quieter environment that sort of is at odds with what he's previously been living in. But he also finds a way to discover who the true villain behind all of the recent events in his life are, who turns out to be an old friend of his, who's now become an obsessive, rich antagonist, leading to a climactic fight that involves the main hero... <coughs> Not only being, <clears throat> excuse me, being put through the ringer, but in the end he also loses a major part of himself. Wolverine loses his claws, Iron Man loses his arc reactor. Still a great movie, but Iron Man 3 more so. But it is interesting. Nobody in Japan thinks people on roofs aren't the least bit suspicious. Logan's resurrection scene after he gets the little guy off of his heart. That was just awesome. Have I mentioned how cool bullet trains are? Sayonara! becomes an instantaneously beloved one-liner. I learned that four X-Men characters can pop up in here from the original trilogy, and yes, I am including the post credit sequence. Gutsy decision to remove Logan's claws. Someone besides Marvel can do a great post credit sequence!